new year. Happy 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 do we have birthdays in this new year? <laughs> really? Wednesday. Wednesday. Supper because of the Zachary concert here um, now can do both if you wish. So tickets are available through Bill Wilson for the um, Robbie Burns Supper. Yeah. That's awesome. That's, uh, that's always a fun night. Always a fun night. Okay. Hey, any ideas? I was going to say about my daughter's birthday. Con, her birthday is January 1st, right? New Year's Day. So she's now 44. Yes. How's that make you feel? That's my oldest. <laughs> That's my oldest. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Okay, let's continue with the acknowledgement of the land and commitment to reconciliation. Honey, we at Virginia United Church acknowledge that the land this church stands on <coughs> is traditional territory of the indigenous peoples of the Williams Treaty. In particular, our neighbors, the Chippewas of Georgina Island First Nations, and settled by our ancestors. With grateful hearts and minds, we promise to continue to live in friendship with A report issued at the end of 2023 indicates that there has been no progress by the federal government on the calls to action from the Truth and Reconciliation Report. There are many discussions about what responses to the calls to action look like in practice. As, as we start to hear New Year, we work to ourselves to imagining a better way without fear and in hope. See language. Our call to worship. The word of the Lord came. Hope, hope for all people cradled in his arms. Word of the Lord comes. Oh, oh 
drawing us out of our comfort zones to go where grace is needed most. Gathering all the outsiders and insiders into our community of the kingdom. Friends, we light our Christ candle as a visible sign of Christ among us. And as a sign of Christ's peace between us, I'm going to invite you to share this with sign language. And so it starts, I'll demonstrate quickly. Hands together, turn and down for peace, and then with and you. So let's do that all together. Peace be with you. And we can return it heart to heart and also with you. All right, our song of praise this morning is morning has broken. Uh, I don't know about the rest of you, but I love seeing all those birds still out there uh, in the middle of winter, fluffed up against the cold. So let's recall all of those bird songs as we sing together. actually meant that her burn was not as severe as it was uh, as it was likely going to be and that little guy actually his mom uh, nominated him for a, an award and so he got an award from the province for his quick thinking and for saving his little sister such pain so it really doesn't matter how old you are is my point so uh, just an 
opportunity to remind us that every one of us has a, an opportunity to help. So that's the challenge. <laughs> and speaking of healing, our check-in question this morning is, share a story about healing or being healed, and that can be in body or spirit. So I, I invite you to turn to friends and neighbors and talk a little bit about getting better. Let's check in. Mm. Particular attack, and the uh, surgeon wanted to operate. And he said, Give me a chance to try high fiber diet. And I did, and I never had any attack. I didn't need surgery. It's sort of like self eating.
want to uh, do a little bit of a comment or introduction. <coughs> During the fall, we were mostly in the Old Testament. We were listening to all of the prophets. We were going through the history of the Kingdom of Israel. With the turning of the new year and with Christmas, we're now going into the Gospels, and especially the Gospel of Mark. So that for the next uh, little while, actually, we're going to be sitting with the Gospel of Mark, going through it chapter by chapter, and looking at it sort of more closely. I want to uh, remind folks that the Bible study uh, is starting this week and will be strange or mysterious. Um, one of my professors used to call it like uh, chemotherapy. It's, it's, it's good for what ails you, but it's a bit tough. Um, so as we go through this, this gospel, I just also want to highlight that it's one of the earliest gospels written. And so it, 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 it's sort of like a poem. It's got exactly how much it needs to have and not one word more. So I, I'm just going to invite you to enter into um, the Gospel of Mark. Keep your eyes, your ears, your spirits open to what the Word is trying to tell us. I should have heard that before I started reading this. Part that I heard it because it is, it is they leave out a few things. So, <clears throat> first we're going to do the psalm. So, Psalm 29 is found on page 756 in your hymnal. <clears throat> ascribe to God, you, you powers of the heaven, ascribe to God all glory and strength. Ascribe to honor to God's holy name. name. And, and worship in the beauty of holiness. God's voice is over the waters, God's glory thundering across the great waters. God's, God's voice is power. God's, God's voice is full of majesty. God's voice shatters the cedars, splinters the cedars of Lebanon. God's voice makes Lebanon skip like a calf. Mount Hermon stampede like a wild young bull. God's voice forks into tongues of fire. God's voice shakes the wilderness, sets trembling the wilderness of the <coughs> God's, God's voice causes the oaks to roar, stripping the forest there, and, and in the temple, temple our cry, glory. Give to your people the blessing of peace. So the scripture reading this morning is taken from First Mark in chapter two, starting on page thirty-three. And Percy's, Percy's uh, lesson is, is true. The uh, answers are short and not uh, full of explanation. When he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around that there was no longer room for them, not even in front of the door. And he was speaking the words to them. Then some people came, bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And after having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there, questioning in their hearts, 
Why does this fellow speak to, in this way? Is it blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once, Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves, and he said to them, Why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up and take your mat and walk? but so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth <coughs> to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat, and go to your home. And he stood up and immediately took the mat and went out before all of them. So they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. Jesus went out again beside the sea. The whole crowd gathered around him, and he taught them. As he was walking along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were also sitting with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the scribes of the Pharisees saw that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors, they said to his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard this, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. <coughs> now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting, and people came and said to him, Why do John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, The wedding guests cannot fast while the bridegroom is with them, can they? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. The, day will come, the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast on that day. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old cloth, cloth, cloth. Otherwise, the patch will pull away from it, and the new from the old, and the worst tear is made. But no one puts new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins, and the wine is lost. And so are the skins. But one puts new wine into fresh wineskins. Here ends the reading of his holy book. Thanks be to Friends, let us pray. <coughs> Holy One, may the words of my mouth and meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. So, one of the things that I've noticed on most church boards, uh, maybe in uh, cafes, uh, is some version of a sign saying, all are welcome. Right, so, we have this welcome rock up there. All are welcome. And we, we need to think, though, about what that means. What does welcoming look like? I think these two stories, uh, the two main stories that we heard this morning, uh, can teach us a little bit about welcoming and what that might look like. 
the first story is the story of the paralyzed man, and it starts off at Jesus' house. Did you catch that little detail? We're actually at Jesus' home, and he's had so many people coming over. His, his rooms are filled, the porch is filled, the area around that is filled. Like, you can't get any more people in there at all. And he's trying to talk to folks. And a group of people arrive with their friend who has been paralyzed. And they can't get in. And so in, a, in the ultimate accessibility project, uh, they, they get a, a ladder, they go up to the, the roof, they dig through the thatch, it sounds like, and lower him in. Uh, I don't know how um, I would feel if I was that paralyzed man, be dragged up a ladder and then, you know, dumped into there. But it seems to work. Uh, he doesn't get hurt, so this is good. But it reminds us that there are barriers. There are barriers that, that people have. They can be physical barriers, right? So this man physically could not get into the house where Jesus was, could not access the care that was needed, could not get anywhere close. And so this extraordinary effort had to be put forward to get him into the house. It also reminds us, this story, that healing is a group activity. When we are in need of healing, it's not something that we can just do on our own. You know, there's that old expression, physician, heal thyself, but it's, it's not true. Doctors need doctors. We all of us need help from time to time. When we are sick, when we are uh, diseased, when our bones are hurting or broken, we need somebody to help us. We need our community around us, our family to support us. Healing is a group activity. And finally, this story reminds us of something really important, and that is that healing is something that happens in our body and our mind. <coughs> That what happens in our body can impact our whole being. There was, uh, or there is a reality sometimes that patients who have heart trouble are a little bit more cranky than usual. And it's not just because they have problems, it's because physically they're not getting enough oxygen that, that they need throughout their body, they're not feeling well, and it can affect your emotions, it can affect your brain. Your brain is not getting everything it needs, and so that impacts your mood. Healing is something that affects our body and our soul. Jesus attends to the soul first, right? Your sins are forgiven. Let go of your burdens. And then the body is healed. So if we're thinking about what does this mean for us as a church, what does this mean when we say all are welcome, I think there's some really important learnings in this for us. First of all, when we say all is welcome, we need to think about our physical space. How are we doing with welcoming people into our church physically? We have the stair lift. We have the warnings on, on, the, on the, the doorway there for anybody uh, taller than me, basically. And <laughs> There's, there's a need for us to do that so that people can be safe and welcome in this place. There's, a, there's laws in Ontario that talk about accessibility, and one of the, the things about accessibility is that if you are in a workplace and somebody has a disability, the workplace has to try and adapt to it to the point of hardship. To the point of hardship. Uh, you can see that in this story. Jesus is asked to heal this person to the point of having a great big hole opened up in his room, right? To the point of hardship. We have to put ourselves out. It's not just, you know, what we feel like doing or, you know, what's easy. To the point of hardship, we put ourselves out. And then we turn to that second story of healing. And we remember that there is a kind of healing where people are welcomed back into community. There are all kinds of ways that you can get put outside of community. And uh, this story talks about two of them. 
there is the, the tax collectors and the sinners, right? Those two categories of people. And the, the tax collectors are not people who are interested in accounting. It's important to remember that tax collecting at that time was more like a shakedown. So uh, this would be more equivalent to um, uh, somebody who's uh, collecting for loans. You know, like they're, you might be worried about your kneecaps if this guy shows up, right? So this is the tax collector, because they always take an extra cut for themselves. And so they're not well liked, is the bottom line, right? And these are the people that Jesus goes to. They've been set outside the community because they have set themselves against their community. And Jesus calls to one of them and says, come and follow me. And then goes to his house with all of the other tax collectors and has a meal. This is a huge scandal. And then who else is there? Well, other sinners, assorted sinners. All of those other people who have been set outside of the community who aren't allowed to visit other houses. I don't know exactly what list, it, and Matthew, or I mean Mark doesn't give us that list, right? I mentioned it's spare on words, um, of what they have done to be set outside. But we can think in our own experience that there are personal reasons why people, for example, might not come to church. Maybe you get into a fight with somebody on the same pew as you. <laughs> so you don't want to come back. All kinds of reasons why people get set outside the church. And, and not just uh, personal reasons, but sometimes there are cultural reasons. It used to be said that the Sunday morning was the most segregated hour in the United <laughs> States. We divide ourselves up in churches. We have churches by language, churches by cultural group. And so you might not feel comfortable, welcome, invited. And so when we think about what does this story have to teach us as a church, it reminds us to open the doors. It reminds us to be sensitive to those people who might not feel comfortable. And how do we do that? By offering invitations, personal invitations to people. And when they come, inviting them to the whole feast. In the very early church, there was a huge controversy about that post-church potluck or the before-church potluck. Because some people wanted to have it actually at a different time because they didn't like to share their food with the other people who weren't bringing good enough food. Big argument. Really? We have to share with those guys? And eventually the decision was, yeah, yeah, you do. When we work as a church at becoming a beloved community, that word that crops up every week. It's about all of these things. It's about this community, this place truly being a sanctuary, a place of peace and welcome and a balm for all who enter, a place where we are attentive to barriers and try to remove them, a place where we are attentive to souls and the brokenness that we have inside us and work to heal that. A place where we try to restore the bonds between us that have been broken. During COVID, we all got a really good sense of what isolation means. And we know how damaging and difficult that was. And so as we come out of that, as we move forward, Let's remember that lesson of being isolated and do our best to reach out so that none are isolated. <clears throat> this is God's vision for us. Every story that we will be hearing from Mark over the next little while, every action that Jesus takes is a reminder of how God wants us to show up in the world. God wants us to be in, a world, in the world such that we are willing to have strangers Open up our roofs and lower people into them so that we can care for them. Put ourselves out there. Put ourselves out. God wants us to be welcoming and friendly to even those that are difficult or sometimes threatening. Sitting down for dinner. 
God wants us to show up ready to be transformed and renewed. A little reminder with those two sayings at the end of the chapter, right? New wine, new cloth. How he shows up. How God walks with us and how we walk with God. And so let us work together then to create this beautiful community, to cherish all of the things that are important about it, and open it up for others who might need to be here. Reflection as we prepare for communion is one bread, one body. And just a note about the um, thing you'll notice, the chorus is on the top and then the verse is underneath. So. to the offering this week comes to us from Helen Keller, who wrote, 
Although the world is full of suffering, it is full also of the overcoming of it. My optimism, then, does not rest on the absence of evil, but on a glad belief in the preponderance of a good and willing effort always to cooperate with the good, that it may prevail. So as we start this new year here at uh, Virginia United Church, as we start this new year uh, working to become a beloved community, let us give in hope of all of the good. and the offerings of our lives in the hope of upbuilding your kingdom among us. Guide us in wisdom, grace, and hope. Amen. Amen. table uh, in body and spirit. So keep in, in your prayers this week, Mitch, Peter, Debbie, Michael, Dino. Condolences to Ken on the passing of his sister, Jeanette Bird. And uh, prayers for all of those who are living with grief and loss. So are there other prayers that people would like to add or other names that people would like to add to our list? We just mourn. I'm sorry? Lauren. Lauren. Was there a page before that? Um, uh, oh, January 7th. Yes, there's a whole page. Um, yes. Wow. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> we're beginning the, the new years with uh, lots of needs. Uh, prayers for Bob after the passing of his, of his wife, uh, Simone in BC. Blessings for all of the volunteers in our community who make good things happen. Uh, prayers for Jay who heads back to college today and prayers for um, John that he hears the good news. Prayers for Douglas that he finds a job soon. Are there any additional prayers that folks would like to add? For the Middle East? Prayers continue for the Middle East uh, which gets worse by the day. Are there other prayers that folks would like to add? I'd just like to extend um, the prayers uh, for all of those who are going back to school this week. Uh, some have had a very good and restful break. Some of those are coming away from a difficult time during the holidays. And uh, the beginning of all of the new stress uh, is there. So we'll just hold lightly and gently all of those who are going back, and that includes teachers and caretakers and school secretaries and all of those who are part of that um, place. So I'm just going to invite everyone just to take a moment and close your eyes and bring to your mind those who are on your personal prayer list, those things that have a hole in Jesus' roof. Give those things to God. Amen. 
As we go through the communion prayer, I invite you to follow uh, along with the responses. I've made this a much more responsive prayer, so you have lots to say as part of it. We're all going to speak this together. May God be with you. May God be also with you. People of God, open your hearts. We open our hearts to God and to each other. Let us give thanks to the living God. With joy and praise, we offer our thanks to the one who offers abundant life. In the morning, awakening God, you took creation and flung it to the far corners of chaos, naming the stars twinkling in the night, shaping deserted places for prayers, feeding all of the creatures in the fields. You long to walk with those created in your image, so we would not be weary. But we listened to the boasting of death as it proclaimed other opportunities. We sent the prophets who cried out, haven't you been listening? Don't you realize what God is trying to do for you? But we continue to delight in all which opposes you. So having created all things, you became the one thing we needed, our Savior, Guide, and Hope. With those so weary that they cannot take another step, with those revived by your grace and hope, we lift our praises to you, now and forever. Holy, 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 holy are you, God of all knowledge. All creation sings glad praises to you, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who came for our sake, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, star namer, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your son. He became weak. <coughs> so the power of the world would be shattered. He became poor. So, so we might, might be filled with the riches of your grace. He went to that deserted place we call the grave. So, so death that might be overturned. As we search for him in our time, as we would proclaim the gospel, may we find that mystery we call faith. Christ died not boasting himself. Christ was raised. The gospel lived out in him. Christ will come to take us by the hand, giving us strength. Here is that bread which, though broken, can strengthen the powerless. Here is that cup which, though emptied, can fill the weary with hope. Pour out your spirit not only on these gifts, but upon your children gathered around the table. We come bone-tired. So make us bone of your bone we come and flesh of your flesh. We come to energized to take up justice. To power us to walk beside the lonely and the homeless. We come steady and strong. So we Yes, that got cut off. Excuse, sorry about that. Feed us with your hope and joy, so we may proclaim your abundant life with the example of our life. And when the day comes we, to gather with all of your children around the feast of the Lamb, <coughs> we will join hands and dance around the table, singing your praise forever and ever. God, our Creator, Christ, our Brother, Spirit of newness, God and community, holy in one. And so with one voice then, we pray as God, has, as Jesus taught when he was among us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, we remember that on the night before he died, Jesus gathered in a room as we have gathered and prayed as we have prayed. Then he took the bread and broke it 
passing it among his disciples, telling them, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat. Do this and remember me. In the same way, he poured out a cup of wine and told them, this is my blood given to you, sign of a new covenant between us. Take and drink. Do this and remember me. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Bread of life. The people of God. I invite you to join me now in the responsive prayer of sending. God sends us forth into the world. So we go so we go yeah. Jesus calls us to love everyone we meet. So we will become the love of community here and beyond. The Holy Spirit encourages us in wisdom. So we may live into the Friends, we are going to sing once more together. This is a dedicated hymn to Carly, and we will be singing This Little Light of Mine. So please uh, be encouraged to hold your light up and let it shine.
We extinguish the Christ candle, but we know that that light is within us, so we will go forth to shine in this world. And as we do that, know that the love of God is poured out upon and through you. The grace of Jesus is offered to and through you, and the Holy Spirit is within you this moment and always. Amen. Amen. We're going to finish by singing the last two verses of the song we started with. <laughs> 